at Media Watch. Hi there. Emma, tell us more. What have you got for us? Uh, yes, it does seem like the focus is very much on inequality in South Africa and nowhere more so than on the cover of the international version of Time magazine. Uh, this very starkly illustrates the division between the haves and the have-nots. This is a real photograph. Wow. The headline, the world's most unequal country. Uh, this was done with a drone by a photographer named Johnny Miller. Um, Recently? done very recently, yes, and uh, he wanted to capture inequality in a single frame. It's, it's kind of what his, he does as a, a rule. Um, there is a very interesting article inside the magazine, but frankly, it is the images that are very much the star mm. of the show here, because uh, that is the suburbs of Johannesburg, and you can see just uh, the stark difference between the two. Um, some people looking at this cover in South Africa, this gentleman saying this is South Africa summarised, others using it as perhaps a driving force. No better motivation to go out and vote than this cover. Uh, good luck on Wednesday, South Africa, says this Twitter user. Um, there are 26 million people registered to vote, but there are between 9 and 10 million people who are eligible to vote who just haven't bothered. And there are an awful lot of people out there who are extremely underwhelmed, I think it's fair to say. Uh, Zapiro, the South African cartoonist, uh, very well known, did this today for the Daily Maverick. Uh, he entitled it Crappy Choice, um, because, as you can see, the ballot paper is actually toilet paper, uh, really signifying that um, he clearly doesn't have a lot of faith in any one of those parties or those candidates candidates standing in South Africa for election. Um, and that does seem to have been echoed on social media by a lot of people using the hashtag, I want to vote, but. Uh, it's like deciding who should make rich from your taxes, says this Twitter user. Well, another, it, yeah. <laughs> yes. another says, what if they reject my vote the same way they've been rejecting my CV? A lot of people talking about how difficult it is to find work right now in South Africa. And this gentleman saying, I want to vote, but my parents have been voting since 1994 and are still living in a shack while the people they were voting for are in mansions and that theme of poverty is everywhere it is overwhelming when you look online at people talking about South Africa and this election 23% of the country uh, lives in slums which is worth remembering now, there's one article uh, that I've seen in News24 on their website, uh, which really puts this all into perspective and makes you understand the level of poverty that we're talking about here. Nine people living in a one-room home and the parents saying, I don't know what I'd be voting for because they have nothing. Uh, their beds are basically uh, old clothes or piled together for the children to sleep on. Um, they have no running water. So the little bit of money that they do have, they have to actually spend on getting hold of water just of to be able to drink. There's a, a water shortage Absolutely. As well. So it, it is really quite unimaginable for many of us to, um, to, to put ourselves in that position with seven children uh, trying to eke out a living. Now, the wife here said, I have my ID, I have voted before, but I don't know what I'm voting for because I have always been poor and remain poor. And that is an overwhelming theme that really nothing has changed. Uh, this Twitter user talking about the fact that um, as soon as there's an election on the horizon, suddenly all the candidates are there and want to speak to the real people. Uh, but he says, I know once you vote for them, you won't see them again until there is another election. And here you have all the candidates uh, offering services like shoe shines and manicures and fanning uh, voters and giving them a back rub too. Um, so, yes, a lot of people really uh, not feeling that too much is going to change with this election. Of course, we expect the ANC to win the numbers are going to be what's really interesting. They've to been in power for 25 years now, haven't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. And nothing seems to be changing. All right, uh, a lot of cynicism ahead of that vote then. OK, we'll keep a close eye on that one for you uh, tomorrow. Let's talk about something else, uh, Emma. Uh, Game of Thrones, the TV series that everybody around the world is going crazy about. Uh, we're on the... <laughs> Eighth series, is it? The final series, anyway. It is the final series, and the eighth series. I've not watched a single episode. Oh, well done. <laughs> ah, you're a rare breed, I Well, you? I know. It's not <laughs> intentional. I just haven't been able to get into it at all. It's not my thing. However, you unless you've been... Yes, unless you've been living under a rock, you will have heard of Game of Thrones, and quite possibly you'll have heard that there was a bit of a boo-boo in one of the most recent episodes, which aired on Sunday. You might be able to see there a little arrow pointing to it. You have a coffee cup on ah. the table. And clearly, it's it's kind of a weird fantasy period drama, so there shouldn't really be a coffee cup. Um, lots of people thought it was Starbucks, which is, frankly, the kind of product placement that you really <laughs> you imagine the amount yeah. of money they'd have to pay to get that uh, actually put in the series. It turned out not to be Starbucks, but that was uh, that did stop but everyone taking... But it is taking... a coffee cup. 
It is a coffee oh, cup. Yeah. How uh, did they miss of, that? Well, it's quite impressive, Incredible. isn't it? Lots of people taking to Twitter to make little jokes about this one, including Starbucks themselves getting in on the act, unsurprisingly. Uh, to be honest, we're surprised she didn't order a dragon drink because dragons <laughs> are a big part of Game of Thrones, apparently, apparently. I have been reading. Um, <laughs> so Game of Thrones, too, had a sense of humour about it. Eventually, they said news from Winterfell. The latte that appeared in the episode was a mistake. Daenerys, I don't know if that's how you pronounce Daenerys. it. Daenerys. Oh, there we go. You know more than I do, <laughs> had ordered a herbal tea. So there we go. So they got in on the joke, um, as did, uh, well... Some others seem to have taken it a bit seriously within the HBO family. And well, they, they have, have some mad fans. It's they got a they real do. Following. And they've actually edited out the coffee cup. So if you want to go to episode four of season eight to see this erroneous coffee cup, you'll be out of luck because whenever it's shown now and on all the streaming services, it has already been taken out. Um, interestingly, the art director told Variety that he thought this had all been blown out of all proportion and wasn't actually that happy that there'd been such a big fuss about he it. Would, Perhaps that's because it's not the first time there have been errors. Uh, if you take a look at the website Distractify, they've been going through finding all the errors. They found 11, including a rubber bendy sword. Um, clearly, that's <laughs> not quite right. Um, this one I particularly enjoyed. It's a death scene. And if you look down by his knee, he's got some sort of a battery pack or a computer charger oh, or a mic. Who knows what oh, that yes. is? But it's clearly not part of the it's set. Not from medieval times. No, sure. absolutely. I think my favourite error of all though, is that they grabbed a uh, head that just happened to be lying around and stuck it on a pipe. I remember that scene, yeah. And it's actually George W. Bush's head. I don't no. know where it came from originally, but they just grabbed it out of the cupboard thinking, oh, yeah, a, so it is. a dismembered head will do, that's fine, and they stuck a wig on it, but it's actually George W. Bush. Now, that has also been edited out for obvious reasons. They didn't oh, they really want to have big George W. Fat. Bush's head on a spike for too long. Uh, as part of this immensely popular television series. I think you're going to go and watch it now, aren't you? It's <laughs> front no. of the errors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Emma, thank you very much indeed. Emma James there with Media Watch.